What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like every single Sunday, I'm going to be talking about and breaking down and sharing with you all the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade heading into this third week of July in 2019. So I hope you all had a fantastic weekend, I hope you all took a little bit of time this weekend to prepare for this upcoming week, that's what I always do on Saturday and Sunday. I break down charts, I take a look at different stocks, take a look at different ETFs, take a look at news to help myself prepare for the upcoming week. So without further ado, guys, let's quickly take a look at the S&P 500's performance over this past week before we do talk about the stocks and ETFs that I have listed here on my notepad. So the past couple of days, guys, the S&P, and I'm sure a lot of you already know this if you were paying attention to the markets, the S&P has been hitting all-time high after all time high after all time high this past friday we actually had a very nice swing up here and we closed at a new all-time high of three thousand and thirteen dollars and ninety two cents you guys can clearly see the past five days here on the five day five minute chart it's been a beautiful uptrend right the 50 sma the 180 sma both of these levels these moving averages they've been acting as support levels we've been making higher lows on top of these moving averages everything has been looking beautiful. And if you guys can see on the 10 day, 30 minute, very quickly, we were in this wedge that we were talking about in the previous um, couple of videos in this past week. And the fact that we broke out of the resistance of this wedge was a very bullish move. And we actually broke out of 2995 and we were able to hold $3,000 as a support this past week, which is very, very good for this continuation of um, the uptrend here. So over the past five days, honestly, over the past month, the markets have just been killing it, guys, all across the board, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and of course, the S&P 500. And if we're taking a look here very quickly... At the stock market future, starting off with the Dow, right now the Dow is down 15 points, down 0.05%. And for those of you guys who don't know, the futures markets open at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this gives us the opportunity as traders, as people that are doing technical analysis, it gives us the opportunity to see, okay, where's the market potentially going to be pushing heading on um, to the rest, uh, to the beginning of this week, right? Let's say the markets were up or the future is gapped up heavily, that would give me, you know, the, the signal, okay, maybe the markets are going to open up green this week, right? But let's say the markets gapped down, they were red heavily in terms of the futures, that would give me the signal, okay, maybe the markets open up red, we might have a red day starting out this week. That's kind of what I use the futures um, for, and it really helps me um, really just plan out my trades in terms of these inverse ETFs, some market ETFs, some different stocks, and so forth, right? Right. So that's what the uh, um, the, uh, the Dow Jones is looking like right now. If we take a look very quickly at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ is down $7.25, down almost 0.1%. And the S&P 500, the E-mini S&P 500 futures, they're down 0.07% right now, down $2.25. So overall, not much crazy movement in terms of the futures. I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on them, heading off to the rest of tonight and into tomorrow morning morning to help me plan out my trades. So that is it really just the rundown of the market over these past couple of days and a quick little two, three minute spiel. So let's just get into it guys, what I am looking at, what I am watching and looking to trade for this upcoming week. So Johnson and Johnson, I'm sure a lot of you guys um, know this by now, uh, but Johnson & Johnson, they're going under, or there's a criminal investigation right now going under for Johnson & Johnson. And if you guys have been tracking this company over the past couple of months, there's been a couple of different events like this that have taken the stock price very, very, uh, really taken the stock price down very negatively. We saw the asbestos, um, uh, um, the, um, the, uh, the, the asbestos in the product, suspected asbestos a couple of months ago that took the stock down from nearly $150 per share down to about $121. Now there's another criminal investigation being um, 
taken place with Johnson & Johnson. I don't know exactly. I forget off the top of my head exactly what it's about. If you guys do know, drop a comment down below, but I forget what it's about. But the stock's price took a dip from 142 down to about 131 to $132. It ended up closing at about $134.30, down about 4% this past Friday. So I'm interested at this point, you know, based on previous scenarios, again, we got that asbestos uh, ordeal a couple of months ago that sent the stock crazily down and it ended up being it ended up being a buying opportunity a dip by opportunity I'm interested in seeing whether or not this a similar thing is going to happen here right once this criminal investigation maybe it blows over maybe it doesn't but let's say it blows over maybe you know the stock starts to rebound this can really be a short-term dip by for Johnson and Johnson this can really be a point where we may be rebounding from here back up to 140 140 two dollars and it honestly seems like we not really we didn't find a bottom quite yet because obviously it really just happened this past Friday so we need to see how the stock reacts but let's say the stock holds you know 130 in this upcoming week 132 134 we start to climb back up into maybe the higher 130s maybe 136 you know, this could be a really just a reversal on Johnson & Johnson to the upside from there, um, given that there's no negative news that might drop the stock down even more here coming in the next couple of weeks. Let's say we don't get any more negative news, maybe it blows over. You know, this could be a very nice bounce back play, and I'm honestly watching it very closely to see, you know, how it ends up reacting, especially after this earnings report that's coming out here in two days, guys. And honestly, at this point, I'm probably going to wait after the earnings report before potentially entering into Johnson & Johnson. I kind of want to see, again, how it reacts on Monday and Tuesday after this news that we got regarding the criminal investigation and after it reports earnings. At that point, I think we'll have a clearer picture of where Johnson & Johnson is headed is headed based off um, the technical analysis, and from there, we'll make our decision. But I personally think, you know, based on, you know, a couple of other different occasions, you know, Stocks drop, and especially Johnson & Johnson, it's a value play. It's considered a safer play. This can definitely rebound and, uh, you know, recover here over the next couple of months, and this really could be a dip buy on Johnson & Johnson. And let me just show you quickly, you know, this little trend line. Take a look at this trend line, guys. If that holds, you know, this could be a higher low from the previous at about 130, and we can really just rebound heavily. So just keep an eye on the news, of course. The media will definitely maybe have a sway here on Johnson & Johnson stock if more negative news comes out for this upcoming week. Just keep an eye on that. Um, you know, I'm really liking this one, though. Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol JNJ. So the next one is natural gas, guys. Natural gas, and not natural gas, but the ETF that trades based upon natural gas, which is UGAS, guys. UGAS, ticker symbol UGAZ, goes up whenever natural gas is going up. And take a look here at natural gas, right? On the 184 hour chart. What are we seeing here? We're seeing a pretty clear cut reversal, right? We found a bottom at 215 and from 215, we hit a higher low at about 223, another higher low at about 227. We broke out of that 180 SMA of resistance here. That's been at resistance over the past couple of months. As you excuse me, as you guys can clearly see, right? And now we're also seeing a bullish cross on natural gas. When that And that pretty much is whenever the 50 SMA or the smaller moving average that you're personally using crosses above the larger moving average, in this instance being the 180 SMA, right? The 50 crossed right above that 180 SMA. We got the pullback at a higher low, 240, higher low from 236. We really bounced on top of that 50 SMA. So that is is looking good in terms of a reversal in natural gas, right? And now we're seeing that it's it's actually trending down about 0.45% as of right now. So I think the breakout spot on natural gas is going to be if it breaks above $2.47. You guys can see that's kind of a resistance at this point, right? 246 to about 247-ish. So if we do end up, let's say, pull back 
maybe 240 again, retest that level, and then we break out and start to make our way to the 250s. That's going to be a ridiculously bullish move where you gas, again, that goes up whenever natural gas is going up. You know, you gas is going to be a very good play at that point, right? And if, if you know, natural gas breaks into the 250s, I don't see why you gas won't be at $21, $22, um, you know, really out of the $20 level of resistance at that point. Point, right, so you guys, natural gas. I'm really liking the reversal, the beginning of the reversal that I'm seeing right now on natural gas. So, another one that I'm watching is 3M ticker symbol MMM. This one did ridiculously well over the past couple of days. I actually traded it once this past week. If you guys were able to catch that um, trading update video, but ever since we broke out of that 50 SMA here on the 20 day one hour chart, we filled the gap from 166 all the way up to 173. So at this point, guys, you know, we are getting a little bit overbought on 3M, but the goal here is to see whether or not it's going to hold 174 as a new support and then maybe fill the gap back up to 178. So at this point, you know, the fact that we broke out of the 50 SMA resistance, that's looking good. And the fact that we're about to test that level probably tomorrow here in, uh, in the stock market, right? You know, we're going to test that. If we break it, you know, this is going to be a potential play where we can grab, you know, 2-3% if it does fill the gap gap up to 178. So MMM right now, although the overall trend is not looking um, very beautiful here, you know, we did end up selling off and really breaking that, you know, higher, high, higher, low pattern this past uh, week. But the fact that we rebounded so heavily, it gives me a bit of hope here that 3M could fill the gap up to 180, guys. There is a chance, I personally think, that that does happen. But ideally here, I would like to see a break a pullback, a retest for the R side to come down a bit, and from there, we can make that move. That's what I'm personally waiting for. So LABU is another ETF that I'm personally watching here. It trades based upon SPSIBI, which is an S&P Biotechnology Select Industry Index. And how this works is whenever this index is going up, this biotech index is going up in price, LABU is going up in price at a 3x rate because it's a 3x leveraged ETF, right? So this is clearly holding the 180 SMA here, just like SPS IBI is, right? The chart is kind of similar. So pretty much if SPS IBI holds this 180 SMA support and makes its way back up to, let's say, 67.75, and we break that level and we start to fill the gap up to 6,900, you know, LABU at that point could be a ridiculously good move, right? It could be a very good play if that does end up happening, and ideally if it does end up holding this 180 SMA heading into tomorrow. And honestly, guys, if it breaks the 180 SMA support, I'm not going to be watching it. That's a complete break of pattern. But from here up to that resistance, even up to the resistance, guys, at $51, it does offer a 50 or not a 50%. Imagine a 50% profit, guys. No, it offers a 10% profit from about $47 up to about $51. So keep an eye, see if it maintains the 180 SMA support. If it does, we break break this 50 SMA resistance tomorrow, that could be a fill up to about $51. And of course, if we break out of there, there could be a lot more left in the tank for LABU. So LABU, I'm loving that one. Apple, let's talk about some of these tech stocks very quickly. So Apple, we see it's out of resistance at about 205, and it's also maintaining the 50 SMA support as well as this $200 level of support on its chart, right? So right now, ideally, I would like to see Apple maintain $200 and that 50 SMA and ideally break out of 205. I think right now, you know, if we break out of 205, we could fill the gap back up, at least in the short term here to $210, especially if the market continues to rally up here to the potential rate cut that we are going to get in two weeks. You know, this could definitely happen here, right? More optimism in the markets. Let's say we get the rate cut, which is most likely going to happen, a 25 basis point rate cut. This is going to really, I think, pump up the markets a, a bit more here, and this could end up shooting Apple up 3%, right? And 3% for Apple, that could be a really good move there, $10,000 
thousand dollars, three percent. That's a three hundred dollar profit, right? So Apple, I'm liking that one. Amazon, A M Z N, Amazing Zon, as some people call it. It hit an all time. No, no, no. It, uh, that was not an all time high. That's a mistake. One year, one day. You guys can see the all time high is twenty fifty, but we actually got close to it to about twenty thirty this past week. Hit that resistance, as you guys can clearly see, and now we're pulling back, and we are seeing a green candlestick forming here on the one year one day and you may be asking yourself isn't it a bit overbought it is a bit overbought guys you really can't deny it so at this point Maybe Amazon could see a bit of a sell-off here. This would be ideal, in my opinion, honestly. If we saw a bit of a sell-off um, down to 1950, I don't know if we'll get that big of a sell-off, but let's say 1960, maybe 1975. At that point, take a look, guys. At that point, the 50 SMA is going to come up a bit, right? It's going to come up a bit, and if we pull back to 1975, that'll be putting us right on the 50 SMA that has been a support here over the past couple of of weeks. So that would be a good um, dip buy, an interesting dip buy, in my opinion, if we are able to get there. And from there, we could probably fill the gap back up to 2030, maybe even 2050, if the markets continue their rally. So Amazon here, it is interesting. I would love to know what you guys actually think about Amazon right now. It's interesting right now. Do you think it's going to pop up from here, maybe not even pull back and hit an all-time high. I would love to know what you guys have to think about it. And while you're at it, comment down below your watch list, what stocks, what ETFs you're watching for this upcoming week. I would love to know what you're watching as well. So the last one that I want to talk about very quickly before I do wrap up today's video is going to be XOP. XOP is in an interesting spot right now. And I personally trade two ETFs, really an inverse ETF combo that I'm sure a lot of you guys already know at this point. And those ETFs are GUSH and DRIP. G-U-S-H and D-R-I-P. And G-U-S-H goes up whenever XOP is going up in price. And DRIP goes up whenever XOP is going down in price, right? So take a look at XOP right now. This is one that I think think obviously can go to uh, either two ways here based on what you are seeing here on my trend lines based off my trend lines notice how XOP is in a wedge it's making higher lows and um, lower highs at the same time, right? Lower high, or rather the low here at 24.50, higher low at 26, higher low at 26.40, right? High here at $28, lower high at $27. So this can go either two ways at this point. You guys can clearly see the one uh, um, trend line here. If we break out, that will be breaking us out of the wedge, the resistance of the wedge, and the 180 SMA, right? That would be a very bullish move. At that point, Gush, which again goes up whenever XOP is going up, Gush would be breaking out of the 180 SMA, and that would be ridiculously bullish for Gush, right? But this can also go another way, right? Back to XOP. If we go back to that wedge, if we break to the downside here, that's going to be a very bearish move. Not only are we breaking the support of the um, channel here, but we're, or rather the uh, wedge, but we're also getting rejected by that 180 SMA that has been a resistance over this past couple, uh, over these past couple of months, as you guys can clearly see. And at that point, drip will be a very good play, very good option. And honestly, drip will be breaking out of moving averages at that point, And that would be really bullish um, uh, as well at that point, right? So those are just a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching, guys. Honestly, XOP, Drip, and Gush, they offer a lot of potential, probably the most potential on this list because once it does pick a move, that move, in my opinion, is going to be really big, right? And another one, a bonus one to um, talk about here very quickly is crude oil. Crude oil right now, it is holding $60, but if it does break $60, you know, we start to head back down to 57, that could be a move on DWT. So DWT is one that goes up whenever crude oil is selling off. This could be very interesting, a short-term play if crude oil fails to hold $60. So I'm really liking uh, Drip, 
uh, XOP and Gush, whichever um, direction they end up going. And Johnson & Johnson, I'm really liking this one as well. Hopefully this blows over. Hopefully the stock recovers and this could be a very good dip buy that I'm considering buying in after this earnings report. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you're watching, what stocks, ETFs, drop your watch list down below. Let me know what you guys think about the markets and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. I appreciate every single one of you guys watching. Hope you all kill it this week. Good luck tomorrow. I'll catch you all in the Discord chat, which is linked down below. Peace out.